I wasn't sure what to expect while putting this low-cost budget gaming PC together, but I gotta say, after testing it out, I'm really impressed by what we have here. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an ultra budget gaming PC. And with this build, there's actually several different ways that you can go. So the cost can fluctuate, really depends on how much performance you want to put down. But the base of the unit is going to remain the same. And right now, building a gaming PC can be super expensive. RAM prices are through the roof. GPUs cost a fortune. So if you're on a budget trying to build with new parts, it's not going to work out very well. But there are ways around it if you don't mind going used. The price can fluctuate depending on how much performance you want to put down. I'm going to be going right in the middle there, but you could go a bit lower end. You could go a bit higher end. It's really up to you. In this video, I'm going to go over how I did this. I'll also leave links in the description. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $23.31. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. What I've got here is one of my favorite PCs of the last couple years. It's an Optiplex 770. I go with the tower version with a build like this. That way we have more GPU choices. We don't have to worry about going with a low profile GPU. And you don't always have to go with the Dell or an Optiplex. HP and Lenovo also make very similar systems, but I chose the 770 because these can be had for around $100 shipped over on eBay. And you'll see some that are listed for like 350. Do not buy them, let them sit, bid on one and you can get one for about a hundred bucks. I wouldn't pay over 120 with 16 gigs of RAM for something like this. That $100 mark is a nice sweet spot for this. And also check your local Craigslist. You might see some of these pop up. Another great choice would be something like an Optiplex 7080. It'll have a higher end CPU. But what we've got here is an Intel Core i7-9700. And this is about as low as I would go at the end of 2025 right now. And this is kind of the last hurrah for this CPU when it comes to newer AAA games. It's kind of still holding its own, and we'll check out the performance in a bit. Pretty surprised, but we've got eight cores, eight threads here. I would shoot for one with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's what I've got here. And we've got that PCIe slot and actually a lot of room inside of this for a GPU. But in order to add a decent GPU, we do need to upgrade the power supply in this. And you can buy a Dell power supply that bolts right in here, but they're kind of expensive, like 85 up to 150, depending on what you want. 460 watt, 500 watt, the 460 would be great. It's got one 8-pin PCIe connector, but I don't want to put another $80 into something like this. And you could always run a lower end GPU off of a SATA to 8 pin PCIe connector, but that's only going to net you around 90 watts of power. And we need a bit more if we want to get this thing performing like we're hoping it will. So what I'm going to do here is replace the power supply with a non Dell power supply. And it's actually pretty simple. It's going to be half the cost of buying one of those 460 watt power supplies. But depending on what power supply you go with, you may need to modify the case just a bit. And uh, with this setup here, I will need to modify just because the power supply is a bit wider. It's definitely a smaller power supply, but it's not that proprietary Dell power supply. We'll go ahead and pop this one out. And you can see it's only got two leads on it, basically CPU power and motherboard power. So we'll need an adapter, but luckily they're like $6 over on Amazon. And the power supply that I'm going to be using for this is a 500 watt SFX. So we'll have more than enough power for the setup we need here. And I've used several of these, but again, you may need a little bit of modification to the case to make it fit properly. You can see we've got a 24 pin connector, which isn't going to plug anywhere into this Dell without one of these. They're six to $7 over on Amazon, 24 pin ATX to the proprietary Dell port. So you can plug basically any ATX power supply into this. And when it comes to CPU power, it's just a four pin. We got eight pin connectors that come apart. So they're dual four pin on basically any power supply out there. That side's going to work just fine. 
Mounting this power supply in the case can be a bit tricky if you don't want to do any kind of modifications, but we're working with a very cheap PC. Cutting a little metal on the back of this thing isn't going to be a big deal. But if you don't want to do that, you could always go with one of these flex power supplies. These are a bit more expensive, I think around 48. It is fully modular, and I do love these for small form factor builds. You can see it kind of lays right in there. And basically, with the hole that's already cut on the rear of this unit for the stock Dell power supply, you'll get more than enough airflow, and you can plug the power in. If we take a look at the SFX version, we'll just need to do a bit of cutting on the rear, so it's really up to you. And when it comes down to it, if you don't want to do either of these, you can go with one of those proprietary Dell power supplies that already has that 8 pin. So I've got my power supply mounted. I just had to cut a bit off the rear using a Dremel tool. Uh, it's in here pretty sturdy. It's not going to go anywhere. You could also use a piece of foam on the bottom. And having a non-modular power supply can be a bit messy because we've got these extra SATA connectors, but it is manageable inside of this case. And now we'll just plug in the adapter for the Dell motherboard port. 24 pin to that over there. And for CPU power, like I mentioned, all power supplies should have this. It's an eight pin and it should split apart. You've got two four pins. We'll just need one of those up there. Once I get the GPU installed, I'll route everything so it's nice and neat. Should look pretty good by the end. Now it's time to add a GPU. And since we've got a larger case here, I mean, it's not a huge case by any means. It's still kind of a mini tower. We've still got a lot of choices when it comes to our GPU. Right off the bat, I think an NVIDIA card is perfect for this setup. RTX 3060 would be the low end that I'd go with this. 8 gigs of VRAM, still going to give you great 1080p performance. If you kind of want to take it up a bit, you could go with the RTX 3070. So the 3070 is going to offer much better performance than that 3060. But with the 3000 series NVIDIA card, you will be missing out on something very important when it comes to these budget builds, and that's frame generation. I know some people don't like it, but with this setup here, it's going to be your best friend with higher resolutions. So what I want to add to this is an RTX 4060. And yeah, it's going to be more expensive than a 3060, but going with the 4060 with the CPU combo is going to allow for 1440p gaming. Plus, when you upgrade the system itself to a new CPU, faster RAM, you can take that 4060 with you and see better performance over there with a more powerful CPU. 235 over on eBay, buy it now, or you can bid these out and you can get them for around 190. So all in with this setup here, 100 bucks for the base system, 40 bucks for the new power supply along with the adapter, and 190 for the GPU, sitting at like 330 to 340 with this setup. You could also get out lower by going with an RTX 3060, or if you want to go the Radeon route, I would suggest something like the RX 6600. Those can be had for around 130 to 160 over on eBay. Once it's all together, looks a little something like this, and I think it came out pretty nice. We've got all the wires tucked right in front of that uh, power supply under the GPU. Not the best looking setup in the world, but we didn't pay a lot for this, and you know, I wasn't going for looks, I was going for performance. And that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at now. First game we have here is Spider-Man 2, and I want to give you a look at the setting. So we'll get in here real quick. We're at 1440p. I'm using DLSS set to balanced. Frame generation is off. And we're at medium settings. What I've noticed here with the i7-9700 is, you know, some of those settings over here going up to high do affect CPU. So with this, we've got eight cores, eight threads. Medium with this game is kind of the sweet spot at 1440. Taking it down to 1080 high is totally possible, and we're seeing averages in the mid 80s with it like that. But if you wanna run it 1440p on this cheaper system, medium with this game is kinda of where it's at with no frame generation. If you take a look at Afterburner, you can see our GPU is pegging out at around 100 watts. Our CPU is at 100% utilization most of the time with this game at 1440p. That will dip a bit when we take it down to 1080. That's kind of the drawback to using this 9000 series CPU here. The 4060 is more than capable. And I'll tell you, the secret weapon we have here is DLSS frame generation. This is why I wanted to go with a 4000 series card over a 3000. So now, instead of running at medium 1440p, we're at high 1440p with DLSS frame gen on, getting over 100 FPS on average. Moving over to my favorite arcade racer, Forza Horizon 5, we're at 1440p Ultra, and I knew the 4060 was going to handle it just fine, I just wasn't sure how this older i7 was going to work out. 
Not bad, but if we paired this up with a more powerful CPU, I mean, we'd be up in the 130s with it. We could definitely gain a lot more, and that's kind of why I opted for the 4060. I mean, if you do something like this, you can save your money, buy a better CPU, motherboard, and still use that 4060 in the future. I also like testing out at least one fighting game, and we've got Street Fighter VI, 1440p, very high settings. I didn't think we'd be under 60 with it, even with the CPU. Not a super hard game to run, but it's great to know that these fighting games are going to run really well on this also. Next up, God of War Ragnarok, 1440p, high settings, no DLSS, and we're not using frame generation. We're seeing an average of around 84 FPS, and uh, it's just a really well-optimized game. It does work pretty well on this 4060, and it looks like this uh, i7 9700 is actually holding its own when it comes to this game at 1440 high. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high settings with DLSS set to balance. This is not using frame gen right now, and if we enabled it, we could almost double our frame rate. If you want to go that route, you definitely could. But I wanted to see what it would do without frame gen, and it looks like we're seeing an average of around 81 FPS at high settings. So yeah, Cyberpunk 2077, also very playable on this system. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance we're seeing here, given the price paid, and it would be nice to have a more powerful CPU. Going with a 10th gen uh, Optiplex would be really nice, like an i7 10th gen would help out with that RTX 4060. But if you're looking to build something for super cheap, this actually works out much better than I thought it would. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting a PC like this together, I'll leave links in the description along with some alternative GPUs and things like that. If you've got any questions or want to see anything else running on this system, let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.